Welcome to night three of the Democratic National Convention. I am honored to be joining you as we continue to celebrate this unconventional convention. We are going to hear from so many phenomenal women who are working to help us build that more perfect union. Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Secretary Hillary Clinton, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, we're going to see an incredible performance from Jennifer Hudson and a world premiere performance from Billie Eilish. We'll meet so many of the activists and organizers working to build a more equal, more just future. And we're going to hear from our 44th president, Barack Obama. You don't need me to tell you things are a mess. Donald Trump is destroying our country and everything we care about. We need leaders who will solve problems like climate change and COVID, not deny them. Leaders who will fight against systemic racism and inequality. And that starts by voting for someone who understands how much is at stake. Someone who's building a team that shares our values. It starts with voting against Donald Trump and for Joe Biden. Silence is not an option and we cannot sit this one out. We all have to vote like our lives and the world depend on it. Some of those kids are now orphans because of you. These are people. I don't want them in our country. They're animals! Mr. President, my mom is the wife of a proud American Marine. And now, please welcome Speaker of the United States House of, of House, Representatives, my honor Nancy to bring you Pelosi. The greetings of House Democrats, the most diverse majority in history, more than 60% women, people of color, and LGBTQ. Our diversity is our strength, our unity is our power. Four years ago, when President Obama and Vice President Biden were in the White House, they made us proud and their leadership made our country great. In that spirit, we come together now, not to decry the darkness, but to light a way forward for our country. That is the guiding purpose of House Democrats, fighting for the people. We have sent the Senate bills for lower health care costs, for bigger paychecks, for cleaner government, protecting John Lewis's voting rights, and enacting George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. We've sent the Senate bills to protect our dreamers, LGBTQ equality, to prevent gun violence, and to preserve our planet for future generations, and even more. All of this is possible for America. Who was standing in the way? Mitch McConnell and Donald Trump. The morning after the last election, I said, we owe Donald Trump an open mind and the chance to lead. I meant it. Every president deserves that. And Trump came in with so much set up for him, a strong economy, plans for managing crises, including a pandemic. Yes, we Democrats would have disagreed with him on many things, but if he had put his own interests and ego aside, seen the humanity in a child ripped from her parents at the border, or a protester calling for justice, or a family wiped out by natural disaster, that would have been a good thing for America and the world. I wish Donald Trump knew how to be a president because America needs a president right now. America has the most COVID deaths in the world and an economic collapse. This crisis is bad and it didn't have to be this way. This crisis is on Donald Trump and the Republicans who enabled him. On November 3rd, we will hold them all accountable. Close to four years now, he has shown no interest in putting in the work. No interest in finding common ground. No interest in using the awesome power of his office to help anyone but himself and his friends. No interest in treating the presidency as anything but one more reality show that he can use to get the attention he craves. Greetings, America. It is truly an honor to be speaking with you tonight. That I am here tonight is a testament to the dedication of generations before me. We must elect a president who will bring something different, something better. We must elect Joe Biden. And I will tell you, I knew Joe as vice president. I knew Joe on the campaign trail. And years from now, this moment will have passed. 
and our children and our grandchildren will look in our eyes and they're going to ask us, where were you when the stakes were so high? They will ask us, what was it like? And we will tell them. We will tell them not just how we felt. We will tell them what we did. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America.